I'm Michelle T. I'm the author of a bunch of books. I'm a literary organizer and a feminist. I'm also a little bit of a witch. Join me as I travel the globe, meeting real witches and learning their magical secrets to living an empowered, amazing life. Every city is a witch city. We're starting our witch adventure in Brooklyn, New York. Let's go explore some neighborhoods and meet some witches. Here we are in Ditmas Park. With these lush tree-lined streets and haunted-looking Victorians, it's a great place to begin gathering our witch powers. We'll be visiting the home of Maya Spalter, author of the book Enchantments, The Modern Witch's Guide to Self-Possession. I'm hoping she can let me in on her badass witch secrets so I can feel like a stronger female in this world. What does it mean to be a modern witch? Being a modern witch means doing the same thing the ancient witches did. Someone who uses the things that they have around them in their home, in their culture, in their neighborhood to build the sort of practice that they want to have. What is this that we're standing in front of? Well, this is my altar. Your altar is the space where you build an image of what it is that your practice looks like. What stays here are my recent ancestors. Why do you keep them on your altar? Because they're my connection to the past and I'm their connection to the future. Will you show me how to build an altar? We're going to be meeting with Banu Guler, the CEO boss witch of CoStar, the insanely popular astrology app that gives poetic yet frank personalized horoscopes. So astrology is so ancient and it's been around and it's stuck around and right now it feels like there's a really big resurgence of it. Like why, why do you think it is so perennial? If you sort of like let go of traditional sun sign astrology, which right. is what you normally see in your magazines where it's like Capricorn, you're going to have a great month today. Right. If you let go of that, actually astrology is this enormously complex system where you have your sun sign but also your moon sign which yeah. represents your emotions or mm -hmm. your Venus which is about love or Mars which is about sex and aggression and you can actually like pull apart every facet of how you relate to each other. And then you have this framework for being like, okay, so me and you, maybe our basic personalities don't mesh because you're an Aquarius and I'm a Scorpio, but we're both Leo moons. And so we just like get each other on this right. emotional level. We're heading over to House of Yes. I'm here to primp and go dancing with drag witch Coleman Drew. By day, Coleman works at one of the longest running witch shops in the US. But by night, Coleman transforms into drag queen Judy Darling. I want to learn how Judy uses traditional witch magic to help her create her hyper feminine gender magic. Super glue is a potion to a drag queen. We need it, we can't live without it. Our jewelry and our nails wouldn't stay on. Do you think that there's magic in gender? or the Oh gen yeah, yeah, 100%. This is ceremonial magic in a way. It does feel very I, ritualistic. I've set out an altar that I pray to the yes. great Judy Darling. Yes. And people come and I am a shaman in a bar. There's something about the way that people used to, eons ago, seek out the priestess and seek out that priestess energy. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is one of the things that draws us to drag shows, is to get that kind of hit of the divine feminine? And I think so, but at the same time, I, I you know, I'm at an idea of feminine. Because I'm right. not, I don't identify as a woman. Right. So I try not to say that I'm this idea of what I want a woman to be. This is like something entirely different to me. Yes, I agree with you. But do you think that it's like that this femininity can be an energy that we're kind of tapping into? This divine feminine. A hundred percent. But what about social media? Like, do you think that it's actually? encouraging us to not really connect with each other? Is it sort of like anti the values that you're saying astrology offers? So much social media is super performative. It's really about like coming off as something you're not. But ultimately, astrology is a way of being really honest about who you are and like, mm. you're an Aquarius. Like, I what? Aquarius. Tell me about being an Aquarius. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of ideas and uh, I don't always know how to ground them. Totally. And we're immediately having a more interesting conversation than, damn, you looked hot in that picture you posted on oh, Facebook. Oh, you just tricked me night. into being deep with astrology. Yes. <laughs> I see. I see. Sorry. So it sounds like Social media has all of this potential to be sort of narcissistic and shallow, and we have this huge uptick in interest in astrology by young people. It's like people who are choosing to bring more depth to their social media communications via astrology.
When I build an altar, I like to represent all of the elements in some sort of spirit. Start with one element. If you're gonna pick water. Okay. This is some rainwater rain last night. A dollar fifty? Yeah. It's cheap to be a witch. It can be. That's good news. Drifting, baby. So we're gonna put some water in there. This little cup used to belong to my um, grandmother, who was very witchy. So yeah, that's, that's definitely the water grandma's witchy cup. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Next, let's do earth. I usually do salt. For this earth, for the so. salt. Yeah, we'll right. put that in this little vessel here. Oh I really love crystals just because they're so beautiful. I like to hold them. And it's earth, right? Yeah, minerals right. are of the earth the same way salt is. Great. It feels really good doing this. Like, yeah. I feel really grounded and, like, inspired. Well, that's what I love about making altars. The process of making an altar brings you into touch with what it is that you are trying to bring into your life. And spending that time and putting this effort into making it fun and beautiful is actually what the magic is. Would you share your potions with me? Oh my god, I would love to. Oh, oh my god. Get into those potions. What do we want? Okay, so I want these, everything. I love this one. This one's a fun one. This is Cleopatra. I want what she has. Right? Just that yeah. like that magic, that mystery, mm -hmm. that ability to make people like sail across the world to bring you things. This one's star. It's good for meeting friends, being good with your words. Where's another okay. spot that you can do? Um, yeah. It's good for words, right? Oh here, you know what? Starting, starting a new adventure. Let's Ooh. give you some money draw. Yeah! I think we need to go utilize all of these magic potions that yeah. we have all over our body mm -hmm. and um, take advantage of all that energy that's being raised by the people on the dance floor. Just kind of go into it and become one with it. So we have our beautiful altar. Mm -hmm. We need to um, charge it up and okay. put our energy into it. How do we do that? I like to sing and dance exuberantly oh. in this very room. Well, you guys, we did it. I cast a Riot Girl spell with the self-possessed Maya Spalter, dove deep into astrology with Scorpio CEO Banu Guler, and hit the dance floor with High Priestess of Drag, Judy Darling. And I feel really, really good, inspired, empowered, and more curious than ever about what witchcraft has to offer. I think we've only scratched the surface of this ancient yet totally contemporary spirituality. Come along as we search for enchantment in our next witch city.